How's it going, Star Seekers? My name's Got Cake, and welcome to this review of The Bullet Time of Revenge, a third person action game where you get to blast your way through hordes of enemies, shoot red barrels, and level whole buildings. Now, as always, hit that like button if you enjoy the review and subscribe for future Switch indie game reviews. So, if you love the Grand Theft Auto series with its mindless violence, sprawling cities, and beautiful graphics, then you're really gonna hate this game. Yeah, that thumbnail was clickbaity as fuck, wasn't it? Which is exactly what I thought when I saw the game's screenshots on the eShop listing and then actually got to play the game for real. So, the game kicks off things literally with a bang as the game's title is blasted onto our screen to the sound of gunfire. And if that wasn't enough to convince you that this game means business, then our hero surely will, as he stands there looking hard as fuck, rocking a power stance atop a skyscraper, with a crew cut and shades combo shotty in hand. Now we have some options at the top of the menu, which look like they've come straight out of a mobile game. The speaker button mutes the game's audio, and we can check out the game's controls by hitting the I button. Here we can see that we can switch weapons with the D-pad, jump with A, enter and exit vehicles with the X button, shoot with ZR, and grenade with ZL. We also have a bullet time button activated by pressing in the left thumbstick. Heading back to the main menu to quickly check out the options, we get another sweet camera pan, and in the options menu we find more audio controls in case muting the game from the main menu just wasn't your thing. We can change the effects quality, which we can see in the background appears to remove shadows, but we'll keep it on high to see how the game handles these HD graphics. We also have inverted controls for all you freaks out there, and sensitivity settings which are left at default. Now the last thing we'll check out is the game's shop, and fuck me, the first thing it lands on is a jetpack costing $750,000. Looking at the price of some of this shit, it seems like it's going to be one of those games that wants you to spend a lot of time playing it just to unlock the good stuff, except for the rabbit's foot which only costs $10. I also noticed that the vehicle generator says I can spawn vehicles by pressing the 0 to 9 keys, but last time I checked, my fucking Switch Pro controller didn't have numbers or keys on it. So beginning our first game, we're informed that we've got to kill 100 baddies, and after killing a few of the enemies, all of which look like Mr. Smith, I noticed some odd issues with the gunshot sound effects. I could only hear gunshots out of one ear, but as I turned, the shots panned around me. Anyway, a minor hiccup I thought, and continued my rampage. After only earning $270 for that round, we're a far cry from the 750 k we need for the jetpack, but we can afford the lucky rabbit's foot. Yeah, give me that lucky fucking rabbit's foot. Heading back into the game, this time we get a mission select menu, which doesn't really work properly as it only highlights missions that you've unlocked. Even though you move across to the locked ones, you can't see what you've highlighted, and if you want to check out the later missions, you just have to guess if you've highlighted the arrow. So it looks like there are 30 missions in total, and it was a bit of a fuck about getting back to the first missions. So our next mission, Death From Above, sees us destroying black vans, and since I didn't beat the first mission in record time, I decided not to bother with the Mr. Smiths and just focus on destroying vans. Now you stand a pistol in the game is semi-automatic, but you don't need to reload it and it fires as fast as you can press the ZR button. Tapping it like a madman, I was able to turn it into sort of an ad hoc machine gun and blitz through the vans in 1 minute 8 seconds, which it turns out still wasn't fast enough. Mission 3 tasked me to destroy some turrets, but instead I decided to go on a little sightseeing tour. First I did a 180 turn and went to check out these drawn on train tracks, which led me to a drawn on tunnel. Then I decided to follow said train tracks down this thousand mile tunnel to the other end where I found another drawn on tunnel and a dead end. Unperturbed, I activated my hero's Spider-Man jump and scaled the wall to find myself in some weird untextured section of the city, complete with what I thought was a floating baseball stadium. My next planned destination was the Las Vegas Tower, but some shitty looking buildings off to the right drew me in, and as I went to explore them, I fell through the floor and was teleported back to the start of the mission. Oh well, time to complete the mission then, which I did, breaking a few safes along the way and stealing the diamonds. Mission 4 took me back to a familiar place to kill some juggernauts. These guys took the piss a bit and killed me, but I had some magical respawn powers and took down a helicopter with a pistol. Next up I had to kill 5 tanks, which I did with a machine gun like you do, and I actually did it in a record time for a change. And then it was back to killing bad guys on mission 6. And so this is generally how the game progresses. You make your way through the missions just destroying or killing shit, with a minimap in the top left marking your targets in red. You can shoot crates to get pickups, with red crates containing grenades, blue ones giving you a random weapon from a selection of 3, which can either be a machine gun, a shotgun, or a rocket launcher, and the yellow ones give you a random perk, which can include a dove which gives you unlimited respawns, a rapid fire perk indicated by these bullets, 
or an item magnet perk which attracts everything to you from miles around. Oh, and did I mention the game has bullet time? Well, you won't really need to use this ever, as there's pretty much zero skill or effort required to complete any of the missions, especially when you get the respawn perk. With it, you can just go ham as fuck lobbing grenades at everything in sight. You can actually die in the game if you take too much damage, but the majority of the enemies drop painkillers or beers which constantly top up your health. You can literally complete almost every mission in the game in less than a minute. So in general the game is pretty buggy and not very well put together. Take this level for instance where I was tasked with destroying a mammoth tank. I went for it head on blasting away at it whilst dodging its fire and I had a great idea of getting in close underneath its barrel so it couldn't shoot me. As I was laying into it with my pistols I suddenly noticed the enter vehicle icon flashing and so I jumped inside and took control of it. After blasting a few tanks with it I got out and it didn't start shooting again so I just finished it off with some grenades. And then there was this other mission where I was tasked with killing Katie, a girl with a rocket launcher, who ended up somehow killing herself, levelling a city block in the process. Any enjoyment the game has to offer is short lived, as you find yourself progressing from one mission to the next, with nothing but a monotonous repetitive gameplay loop which rotates between killing Mr Smiths, to blowing up different vehicles, to destroying random shit like barrels, crates and fucking emergency exits of all things and every 10 levels you get to kill a boss who's basically a bit of a bullet sponge and not much more. The most fun you can have in the game is with its few vehicle levels which let you blitz stuff from up high with the helicopter's dual miniguns or level buildings with the mammoth tank but they're few and far between. I managed to finish the game in a couple of hours and that was including the amount of time it took me to record footage for this review and write the majority of the script. So what can I say about the game that I've not already said? Well if I'm honest, not much really. Like I said, it's more or less just a repetitive grind and it stops being fun after about mission 5. So I give games a rating between 1 and 5 stars, with a shovel worst stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating's based on my own personal opinions on what the game has to offer in terms of gameplay and value for money to potential buyers. And for a rating I'd give the bullet, Time of Revenge, 1 out of 5 stars. With its audio bugs, low resolution graphics and glitchy gameplay, the game's a perfect blend of repetition and dissatisfaction. And at the end of it all, you'll still be $550,000 short of a fucking jetpack. Having said all this, there'll still likely be some people out there who find enjoyment in it, and the game's price point isn't exactly high, though I'd still wait until it goes on sale before giving it a try. You can get the game now on the UK Switch eStore for £3.64, or on the US eStore for $3.99. And that's about it for this review of The Bullet Time of Revenge. If you enjoyed the review, don't forget to hit that like button, and at the same time, why not subscribe to the channel for future Switch indie game reviews. For now though, I want to say thanks once again for watching, and until next time, game on.